Hi everyone, welcome to another tutorial. I recently ran a prize draw when I hit 10,000 subscribers. The winner was able to pick the subject for an upcoming tutorial video. That winner was someone called SB Anthony and he picked skin tones. Specifically, he wanted to learn how to paint light skin tones. So that's what this tutorial is all about. What we're gonna do is we're gonna paint a space marine head from start to finish and I'm gonna take you through the whole process that I use when painting a character level face. So hopefully you can use this tutorial on some of your characters and some of your display pieces and you can also modify this for some rank and file stuff as well if you simplify the stages. Obviously there's loads of different ways to paint skin as you can see on screen but you can tweak this tutorial to suit whatever it is you're painting. So hopefully you enjoy it and you find it informative so just give it a go and off we go with the tutorial. Okay so I'm going to be painting this space marine head here. I picked this one because it's got lots of nice features we can play with. It's got a few scars here on the side of the face. It's got some uh, flat area there where we can do some uh, some stubble effects and things. And it's got there's some normal hair at the top there as well. So I thought this is quite a good face. It's got a nice expression as well. So it should demonstrate the uh, the painting faces tutorial quite well. Uh, and we're going to be doing it over a black undercoat as well. If you can try and start over a lighter undercoat, uh, and we'll paint the head separately. But we're going to do this over black because I think most people use black. So. We're going to do it the hard way uh, just to show you guys so the first thing that i am going to do is i'm going to thin down some bugman's glow on my wet palette with some water it's about a 50 50 mix water to paint and i'm going to basically just coat the whole of the head the skin area in bugman's glow just to get a solid base coat so keep the paint moving Once you've got that first layer on there before don't go back over that layer until it's completely dry the temptation is to keep brushing over that first layer until it's thick what you'll actually do is you'll make that first layer lumpy and then you'll end up with a lumpy face and you want smooth painting here and smooth finish so even though it's not covered in the first layer once that's dry we'll go over a few times and it'll make it nice and strong so whilst it looks quite ugly right now once we've got a couple of coats on it, it'll be nice and strong ready for some shading and highlighting so just make sure that whole area is covered what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that dry completely and then do another few coats over that until we've got a solid base coat for the skin to work over Okay, so we've got a solid foundation for our skin now. So this was about, I'd say about three or four thin coats of Bugman's Glow. And now we've got a nice solid base coat there with none of the facial detail destroyed because we just did a thin coat, let it dry, do another thin coat, let it dry until you're happy and it's solid. So now I want to actually lighten it up a little bit first before I uh, start shading. So uh, the tone that it is at the minute, I want to get it to like a mid-tone first before I shade down. So what I've done is I've done a 50-50 mix of Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone on my palette. And I've also added some water to that as well. I want to keep the paint thin. I don't want to destroy any of the facial features. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over pretty much most of that skin again. So really the first stage that we did was an undercoat for this color so that it's nice and smooth and strong. So I'm hitting pretty much all of the areas except for the very most recessed areas, which is pretty much in the eyes. And in the mouth really, everywhere else gets the coat of this paint because we're gonna shade in a minute. So once again, very thin, multiple layers. It's almost an overbrush over the whole face. Try not to let the paint collect in any of the recesses too much. You don't want to destroy any of the detail. So I'm going to carry on with this and then we'll come back in a second. 
Okay, so we've got our first layer done over that base coat now. So that was the Cadian Flesh Tone and Bugman's Glow Mix. So now we're just going to use pure Cadian Flesh Tone, quite thin down now with some water. And then we're going to focus in a little bit more on those larger areas. And we're going to leave some of that previous layer showing in some of the more recessed areas. So you'll notice how thin the paint is here, so we're just going to keep building it up over the face as we need to. When you're painting the face, try and see the depth of the shadows and the contours of the face and judge how much of that previous layer you need to leave showing. So if it's a very deep recess, definitely leave it. If it's shallow, paint over the whole area with this next stage, because this next stage will then be your shade for the next stage. Then you'll have a nice graduation over the face, showing the different contours of the face. So there's not really harsh lines where there shouldn't be harsh lines. There's soft lines and shallow lines, shallow highlights where there needs to be. So I'm going to throw, uh, carry on with this. You guys can see the kind of thing that we're doing here. Just keep going over until that colour is solid where you want it, leaving some of that previous colour showing. Okay, so we've got a nice mid-tone going on now with the skin. So quite happy with it so far in terms of the tone of it. So now I'm just going to start doing some shading. So we're just going to thin down some Tuscore fur to begin with. This is a nice warm brown. It looks like it's a nice natural shade for the skin. So I'm just going to make that into a wash on my palette. So it's very thin. When I say make it into a wash, I mean just basically add a lot of water. I'm just going to start painting that around the recessed areas. Focusing in around the eyes. Around the nose. Around those heavy features. This is also adding some colour into the face for me as well. And we're just going to keep glazing this in as we want it. Inside the ear, under the chin, we'll go around the face. You can keep that going over until you're happy. Pop a little bit under the cheeks. Okay, so we'll let that dry and we'll do another stage in a second. Okay, ready for a bit more shading now. So now I've just thinned down some Doomball Brown on the palette, made that into a wash as well, just like before. And I'm going to focus that in on more of those deeper recesses and the more harsh features of the face. Don't worry if at this point some of that wash looks a little bit messy because we're going to go over and re-highlight. We're just really adding some definition and some colour into the face at the moment. So this Doom Ball colour used to be uh, the old dark flesh colour, so it's perfect for shading faces. It's nice and warm. So when I said earlier about being sympathetic to the contours of the face, so don't add this shading under the cheeks because that is just a shallow divot there underneath the cheeks. So we don't want any more shading than that, but we've got harsh lines around the eyes and the nose, so we can add it around there. Okay. 
Okay, we'll do some harsh shading now with Rhinox Hide. So I'm going to thin that down again. Plenty of water. Just paint that into the most deepest recesses of the face. So definitely around the eyes. And the sides of the nose there. Under the nose. Inside the mouth. So just rinse and repeat really. Just keep going over. Until you're happy with the shading. You need a very small amount on your brush. Just dropping it in where it's needed. On the face. Do a little bit more and then we'll go back to some highlighting. Okay, with a lot of the shading done now, I'm going to start getting some more highlights on. So I've made a mix on my palette of KDM Flesh Tone and Kislev Flesh. So this is a 50-50 mix, thinned down with water. And then we're going to start going over those more raised areas with this thin mix. Just glazing those highlights on as needed. So put it on. Let it dry, go over it again. Don't go over it until it's dry. Acrylic paint dries so quickly, just best just put it on, let it dry. Get another layer on top to make it more intense. So now we're leaving the base coats and the other highlights and the shading in the recesses. Just focusing on flat areas of the head and the more raised areas so the whole of the scalp gets the highlight as well and the tops of the cheeks So I'm going to highlight this up and then we'll go on to the next stage in a minute. So now we're working with the highlights now. So now that one's done, you can hopefully start to see some depth and some highlights on the face coming on. So the next thing that I'm going to do now is another layer, another highlight of Kislev Flesh. So this is thinned down again, just on the palette. And then as before, just working on those lighter, more raised areas. But leaving even more of that previous colour showing. So we get a nice colour in the skin. So don't destroy your previous highlights. Being sympathetic to the shape of the face. So the brows are quite, quite raised, so we'll put some paint on there. The forehead will hit the light. Just keep glazing those highlights up. Just be patient with it and keep going. Obviously the more difficult parts are towards the centre of the face where you've got the cheeks and the nose and the mouth. Just dealing with those as you need to. And just keep those highlights going. Okay, that's that highlight done now. Um, I think I'm just going to do some very thin glazes of your shabti bone, just on some of the very raised areas of the face before we go on to the next stage. So at the minute, I'm not picking out any real definition or lines on the face. Just working on getting those main highlights in. We'll do some definition a bit later.
So once again, just a small amount of paint, just glazing it over. Just leaving the previous layers showing. You can see there on the face, there's a graduation going on. So I'll just finish this up and then we'll go on to the next stage. Okay, so we've got some highlights going on now. Uh, we're on to a good stage now, which is a little bit of fun. So we start adding a bit of colour into the face so it doesn't look so flat. So I've taken some uh, corn red and I've mixed that with Acadian flesh tone. And I've made that into a thin wash. And I'm just going to start washing that underneath the cheekbones there. So just thinking about where the colour would land. So we might have slightly red cheeks and around the nose, definitely have a bit of colour around there, so just a small amount underneath this cheek as well. So this is just adding a bit of life into the miniature now. Be very careful, not too much. And do that around the mouth as well. Focusing on the bottom lip. So that was the mix. Now I'm just going to take some pure corn red and thin that down with some water. So this is quite strong now. bringing it in towards the center. If you get too much on, just draw it off with your brush and then carry on. Let's get some color into the bottom lip. Now I'm dropping some color into the scars now. So this is thin corn red again. Right into that. I think those cheeks could do a little bit more colour as well. So this is very dilute. Just underneath, not on. Okay, so we've got some warm colours going on now. Okay, so next I'm going to try and bring some focus into the eyes. So I'm just going to mix a little bit of Thunderhawk Blue in with that corn red. That'll make a slight, slightly purple mix. You need a, a tiny amount. And I'm just going to take that around the eyes. So Thunderhawk Blue rather than just blue just softens that a little bit so it's not so harsh. We'll just glaze it around the eyes towards the centre. And I think I'll just add a touch of black to the corn red on my palette just to deepen some of those scars. So. 
and I'm just going to thin down some Thunderhawk blue on its own. It's a very dilute now. And I'm just going to paint that around the eye and the lower eye. So it's a nice little trick and it pops a lot of attention into the eyes. Very subtle. That's something I like to do. And we're going to highlight over that anyway, so if it's a bit strong, don't worry. It looks like he's got eyeshadow on. And I've got a little bit of screamer pink here. Let's thin that down on the palette. And that's going to go on the bottom lip. So you'll notice at this stage, it looks like he's got some heavy makeup going on, but this is the stage where all the colors added. And now we're going to layer over some more highlights and it's going to soften some of that color back in. And then at the end, you might want to add some more in depending on your taste and what the kind of model is. So don't worry about there being too much color on it. And now, so what we're going to do next is just going to start layering over some more highlights. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly thin down some of that Kids Love Flesh. Just start glazing that back over some of those areas where we want to re-establish the highlights. So that wash is probably taking away some of those highlights. Just thinly working over. Maintaining the smooth finish. So we're just toning down some of that harsh colour that we've just added in some areas. But obviously we don't want to destroy all of it. So when you're painting over it like this, it makes it feel like that colour is within the skin rather than sitting on top of the skin. And that's how it should be. Okay, and I'm going to just do the same thing with the Shabti Bone. Just getting that glaze back over, focusing on the most raised areas. Tops of the cheeks, tops of the eyes, nose, chin. Keep working around the face. I'll get this finished and we'll come back in a second. Okay, so we're just finishing up the Ushabti Bone highlight. Just wanted to show this bit that I'm working on right now. So I've done the faint glazes over those areas that I wanted this. I've just started working on picking out some of these expression lines, which I talked about earlier. So this is just picking out some sharper lines with the brush. Describing the shape of the face and the expression that we want. So you'll normally see these around the eyes. Around the other side. So you don't need much paint, just enough just to pick it out a little bit. It's just something I like to do because it really pops the face out. And you can see the bottom lip is still quite harsh and pink, so just going to get a line on there. So dab your brush on, makes it feel like a natural bottom lip. So there you go. And then we'll go on to another stage in just a second. 
Okay, so now we're going to do a soft highlight of pallid witch flesh. So this is almost white now. I just want to get this on. Some of those most extremely raised areas. Not being too harsh with it, just softening out those edges. Focusing on the top. So this needs to be very, very thin. And you can go over those expression lines again if you want with this. Don't make it too harsh. I'll finish this final highlight off here and then we'll come back. So all I've done now is I've just neatened up around the face with a bit of black, just neatened up the uh, the tech parts and the undersuit and uh, just painted out the hair as well and just some black. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix a touch of black and Rhinox Hide together on my palette and just make that into a bit of a wash and I'm just going to drop that in where the eyes are, just to basically block out the eyeball, ready for painting. So the black and brown works well because it's not as harsh as just the black. Literally just putting that in there as a, a small wash. I'll do the same side of the mouth. There we go, so that's ready now to be painted in. I'm just going to get some white on the palette, just thinning that down. Let's test it first. Just painting a thin white line where we want the eyeball. Just keep practicing, the neatness will come over time. Okay, so I'm just going to put a pupil in one of the eyes now. So I'm going to leave this one just white, because if the scars sort of blinded him, I thought it might be quite nice just to do one. So I'm just going to thin down some black paint there. Just a small amount. When you do the pupil, just ensure that it reaches the top and the bottom of the eye pore. So it's not just a dot in the middle of the eye. 
Now at this point, just to finish the skin on the face, I'm just going to go around with some very thin white paint, just where I want to, just to literally just pick out a few edges to accentuate the expression. So it won't be a lot. Just to add a little bit more contrast here and there. So just picking out this top edges. I'll finish this off now. Okay, so I've finished that final highlight there and I've just painted out the hair and there's those tech bits really quickly as well so we can see what the finished face might look like. So you could leave it like this at this stage if you want him to be like this and clean cut and, and if you're happy. But what you can do is you can just take it a little bit further if you want to. So on my palette, I've got a mix of Cadian Flesh Tone and just a little bit of Dawnstone Grey in there. And I'm making that into a wash. So it's very thin and I'm just going to glaze that over the chin where the stubble might be. So if we don't want to destroy the highlights we've done, we're just tinting the skin a little bit here just to give him that five o'clock shadow that a veteran might have. And whilst that's drying, I think it might be good just to get it up here as well because he shaved his head. I'll give it that natural feel. This side as well. You should mix the grain with the flesh tone so it feels like this colour is a part of the flesh and not just sitting on top. And it's not too harsh. And you just keep going over as much as you want until you're happy with the finish. And this just adds a bit of interest to the face. If you want it a little bit darker than that, you can just add a touch of black and keep going. What do you want? That's what we'll do. We'll just add a little bit more. Getting that on my palette now. Just drawing your brush off the face so the paint doesn't pull. Hopefully you can see the difference in the skin tone now. It makes it, it's got that feel that it's been shaved. It works quite well on the chin. It's just quite subtle, but it's quite nice to do. Then once you've done that, you probably just want to go over and just have another highlight back over those areas again that you've put the stubble on, especially around the mouth. So there we go, the face is pretty much done now. I've just re-established those highlights over those areas that we've just glazed over with stubble. And uh, yeah, it's just picked out those lines again nicely. And I think you can call the face pretty much done now.
Okay, so there we've got a picture of the finished head. So you can see all of the color that we added in in those stages, which works really well. It adds a lot of life to the miniature. So I recommend just doing that stage as well. So this is obviously quite good for characters. So you don't need to go this far for troopers, just a couple of shades and a couple of highlights for those guys. But I think this was quite nice just to demonstrate all the different things you can do with faces. So hopefully you'll like this and you'll give it a go. Uh, up next is just a little um, bit of a treat with the tattoo video. So just enjoy that if you want to. So added a little bonus, I've just made a mix on my palette of Thunderhawk Blue, a touch of black, Acadian Flesh Tone. And this makes a natural tattoo pigment. So it's the blue in there, which gives it that tattoo ink feel. So we're just going to pop a tattoo on the side of his head. Just for fun.